Hello! Today we are creating a low poly piece using this very flattering image of Jessica Universe. Now, when you have a 3D model, be it in games or animated movies, they are comprised of tens of thousands of little polygons, and the more polygons you have, the smoother the model will appear. And while there is no concrete number of polygons for what is considered low poly, it usually falls between 1 to 2,000 polygons. Low poly definitely has a certain aesthetic appeal, and although the concept was originally designed for faster loading times in games, other artists have adapted it and integrated it into their work because, you know, it looks nice. When choosing your image, you want a subject with very clear edges. Remember that this will be made up of several triangles, which all have very hard, very defined edges. So if you choose an image, that's a bit blurry or low res, or you just can't really tell the difference between the foreground and background, your viewer won't be able to easily recognize your subject as easily, and it would just look very wonky. Now we're here in Illustrator with the image I have so carefully selected. At this point, don't worry about the size of your document. Focus on getting the dimensions that you want. Because Illustrator is vector-based, you can change the resolution at any time without losing quality. You could have it set at 10 by 10 pixels, then change it to 4000 later if you really wanted to. First, we're going to open the layers panel by pressing F7, then lock the image layer so that it doesn't shift while we're working on top of it. Create a new layer above it, and this will be kind of our outline layer, where we're drawing our triangular outlines to later fill with color. Press P to select the pen tool, and click to begin forming your triangle. You want to make sure that you have your fill off and your stroke on, with preferably a color that you don't see in the image. I chose this very fluorescent, delicious, toxic waste green. This little asterisk means that you're at the starting point of the path that you're creating. When you finish your triangle, it is crucial that you bring it back to the starting point for each and every one of the triangles you create. You'll be able to tell that your triangle is closed when the little circle appears by the pen icon. I didn't do this when I made my first polygon mesh, and I was left with a bunch of open triangles and odd shapes. Colors were filling in areas that I didn't want them to, and it took me an extra couple of hours to go back and do it properly. If you put in the extra time and care now, you won't have to later. Ideally, you'd want to create smaller triangles in the areas that have more detail, like the eyes, nose, mouth, and possibly a hair. This will let you get deep into the little holes and creases, rather than having just a giant dark triangle where the nose should be. This process is very similar to a term called planar analysis, where you simplify surfaces into flat planes. I know that the process of creating these triangles is extremely tedious, but take your time, use your brain to map out where you want your shapes, and don't get sloppy. When I began this piece, my Cintiq was not working and I had to send it to be repaired. I wanted to create something that could easily be done with just my mouse, but I also wanted to implement some of my design skills, so I wasn't just blindly copying what other great artists on YouTube had already done with low poly. So instead of using the color picker to just pick and fill colors in their designated area, I created a color palette that somewhat mimicked the local colors of my image. My main goal was finding a color that I could use as the skin tone, something like an orange or pink or red even. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you could have green or purple or blue skin too, just know what you're doing when you choose the rest of your colors. Easy ways to go are analogous or monochromatic schemes if you really want green skin. Instead of having black for all of the dark areas in your piece, you could make it more intriguing if you chose a darker hue without going all black. It's kind of like what Da Vinci said when he explained that shadows are not a pure gray, but rather just a darker version of the color that they fall upon. At least I 
think it was Da Vinci. But regardless, that's the reason using a darker hue in place of black will work in our piece too. In my case, it's a deep burgundy. When you're ready to begin filling in your triangles, duplicate the outline layer and lock the one underneath the duplicate layer. Set your new layer to fill on and stroke off. This way you'll be able to fill in all of the colors on top without an ugly neon line between each triangle, but you'll still be able to have it underneath as a reference. So now you have your base colors, but you don't know how to apply them in a way that will effectively give your piece shape and dimension. You could grayscale your document and just match your new color to the grayscale, but that would take much longer, and personally, I don't think it's completely necessary. I chose a value of orange that was similar to a value on the face. I put a lighter orange on the cheeks, which is where you see one of the lighter values in the image, and darker oranges and reds where some of the darkest shadows would be. And I just used those points as an anchor so that I could kind of gauge how light or dark the surrounding triangles would be. But if you really want to make your piece even more compelling, you could adjust the hue as your color gets lighter and darker. For example, as my orange got lighter, I made it more yellow, and as it got darker, I made it more red. As I approach the outer edge of the skin, I'm making the orange a bit bluer. I know I said I want the orange to pop out, and it still does, but right now it seems like it's a separate image from the background. By incorporating some of that blue in the skin, you get a sense of harmony and unity, so it all finally looks like one piece altogether. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and find it useful for a rainy day where maybe your tablet isn't working or your hand isn't just doing what you want it to, but hopefully neither of those happen.